Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora's special spotlight presentation in the world of recruiting and you know that uh, on Wake Up Call we've been on the recruiting trail for many years. Love the opportunity to speak with student athletes all over the country and some outside of the country. Here today with us Cole Snyder joining the broadcast. Spent his first three seasons at Rutgers, last two at Buffalo, the University of Buffalo, and now has a final year of eligibility thanks to the COVID free year awarded to those student athletes that were in school during the pandemic that had an opportunity to play another season. So with that being said, we bring Cole into the show. Cole, how are we doing? Never better. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And Cole, uh, playing the quarterback position, uh, you just spent some time at Syracuse, just took a visit. We know that uh, Garrett Trader has been leading the team the past few seasons, and they're in need of a quarterback stepping forward. So what can you say about your time out at Syracuse? Um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, I have a lot of previous relationships with a lot of the staff, so going there, um, it really felt like home. It really felt like, you know, I already had, like, I, I felt like I'd been there. So it was really comfortable, and, you know, I loved um, everything that Coach Brown was talking about, the, the mission that he has um, in mind, and what he's going to do to set the players up after football is really special and I you know a lot of coaches say that but I can really see him doing things and there's going to be things in order to to make it happen and really set you up for life after football so overall it was a great experience and um you know going to be making this decision here relatively soon so I'm excited yeah you know and and you talk about having a relationship with the staff before who did you know that's on the current staff at Syracuse, and when did you connect with them originally? Yep, so Nunzio Campanelli, I worked with him at Rutgers. Um, obviously, Coach Fran Brown was at Rutgers. Um, Phil Gard, which is a – he works with the offensive line. I was, he was at Rutgers. Um, Coach, Coach Red was at Rutgers. Um, Tyshawn Fogg, I played with him at Rutgers. Um, who else? Who else? Um, there's more. I mean, Robert Wright, who was at Buffalo, um, he just got hired there. Um, I was with him this past year, and I feel like I feel like there's even more that I'm forgetting. Um, those are the ones that come to mind off the top of my head. And Robert Wright you know, getting hired to Syracuse. Uh, what did he do at Buffalo that he's uh, transitioning into at Syracuse? Yeah, so he was our defensive coordinator at Buffalo. And, you know, I was close with him, had a great relationship. And, you know, him coming to Syracuse, all I can say is that he's going to be a guy who will do everything in his power to prepare the team to be ready. And a guy that will put in countless hours and do whatever you need. Like, um, he, me and him always just had a really good relationship and kind of kind of bonded off field as well i mean because he's just he's just such a good good person and good guy like he really cares about you as a person and stuff so um i love it i'm happy for syracuse that they got him i think he's a he's a great defensive mind super smart um really knows his stuff and i'm sure he'll, he will do great things wherever, wherever he ends up in in life and in football as well so you have those connections back at Rutgers with the staff and like you said you named off so many members of the staff that are at Syracuse that were at Rutgers. What was what was that like for you to work with them originally? What did you take away from all these guys? Because Syracuse fans are wondering about the new staff. What are they getting? You know, who's going to make up this new roster of coaches? You worked with them. So what can you say about the staff that is now coming into Syracuse? Yeah, I mean, you know, going back to my time at Rutgers, Coach Giano taught me so much about football and so much about being a man. And, you know, I think he's just a really good teacher of the game and life. And all these guys have learned um, things from him that I'm sure they're going to take with them in their journey to Syracuse. And, you know, it's been some time since some of these guys have been there. So I'm sure they've learned a lot of things from other people as well. And, you know, I also met some really cool coaches and really great people that I didn't know before. So between the combination of knowing um, people previously and learning and meeting new people while I was up there, um, it was just 
everybody was really nice, really genuine, and they got a bunch of great people surrounding the program. Um, you know, so I think, you know, between the roster that Syracuse has right now, they have a lot of talent on that team. And, you know, obviously, you know, they struggled a little bit with the quarterback position, having to do some wildcat stuff towards the end of the year, um, unfortunately. But, I mean, you see see Dan go out there and, and make plays, and I'm sure he's going to do the same thing in the bowl game, playing a uh, little, little wildcat quarterback, throwing it around and stuff. So, it's, I, mean, I mean, there's there's a ton of talent on the roster. And between that and Coach Fran and the staff that he's bringing in and the people that are staying on staff, um, you know, I'm really excited about Syracuse football. Fran Brown being the secondary coach in 2020 and 2021 while you were at Rutgers, how would you describe him just as a member of the team, around the team, just his energy? Because, you know, coming into Syracuse, he's definitely left a great first impression. What was it like to work with somebody like him? Even though he was the DB's coach, I mean, obviously being on the staff while you were there at Rutgers. Yeah, I would say three words to describe him. Um, Number one, being a competitor. Number two, being um, genuine. And number three, just being real. Like, not not afraid to, he's not going to sugarcoat everything. Um, he's going to give it to you real and uncut and unfiltered. And, you know, him being a competitor, like you just, you just saw that, um, come out in his players, um, his position group and also in him at practice competing against other coaches, bringing the juice, bringing the energy. Um, you know, he was, he was a fan favorite when I was at Rutgers. So, uh, I have no doubt that'll be, he'll be a well-liked and, you know, the team will accept him very well. When you were looking, speaking here with Cole Snyder, quarterback who has the opportunity to play one final season collegiately and is in the transfer portal currently coming from the University at Buffalo, when you had so much work with this staff at Rutgers and now they're recruiting you to Syracuse, how kind of poetic is this story? that there's an opportunity for you to reconnect with some coaches that you care about, but at the same time, it would be a totally new chapter in your life if you were to choose Syracuse. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm in a different stage in my career. Um, so this time around, it's a much different different opportunity. And, you know, wherever I end up, you know, it's not just going to be because I – I played with or coached with or, uh, you know, played under some people. It's going to be because the school fit me the best, whether it's academic, culture, or football fit. You know, so the school that fits me the best between all three of those boxes is, is where I'm going to end up. But I think Syracuse is just an added benefit that I have a lot of previous relationships. So besides Syracuse, who else is kind of in this running in your mind, there's a lot of people that speak for student athletes and try to crystal ball where people are going, but I like to go straight to the student athlete and ask you because you know better than anybody. So besides Syracuse, who are some of the other schools that you feel most connected to? Yeah, I mean, you know, I got some offers right now, um, you know, but Rice, Vanderbilt, um, Georgia State, Temple, um, you know, I'm still having schools reach out to me. Um, you know, last night, uh, UNLV reached out and a couple other schools. So, I mean, this transfer portal thing is kind of crazy and, and it goes by really fast. So, but I don't know. I'm just kind of taking it day by day and um, I'm praying on it, you know, trusting, trusting where God um, has planned for me to go and um, talk to the men above and talk to the people around me and make a decision based off of that. And you speak on God here, Cole. There's something on your social media, on X, the former Twitter. It says, unfinished business, Papa. I'd I'd love for you to go a little bit deeper into why you put that up there. Yeah, so when I was in high school, uh, my grandfather passed away. and um, He was always a big supporter of me playing football. And we'd always talked about, you know, playing in the NFL and going to college and playing for somebody. And, you know... 
that's that's just been in my in my bio since I was in high school and kind of just just left it there um, because you know I think I think you know God has a plan for everybody and you know I, I just have a feeling that He's watching over me during this time and guiding me in the right place where I can succeed um, as a team and as an individual. Um, but yeah, that that's the purpose for that. And I can appreciate that. And uh, my grandfather, while we're talking right now. Uh, he he shows me a lot of stuff through his number thirteen and my number twenty one, and I'm not kidding with you, Cole. As as you're talking about your grandfather, I'm seeing this thing that I I definitely believe is a message from him. Uh, do you get those messages from your grandfather? Do you have moments where you feel like something that happens or something that you see or something that you hear kind of brings you back where you feel like from heaven he's reaching out to you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he was a he was a dirt race car driver um, back in the day, and now my uncle also races um, dirt late models, and um, some other family members do as well. So racing was a big thing, but his number um, for racing was two twenty two. So whenever I see a bunch of twos back to back, it's always like a sign, and I always always think about them. And that has happened during during this recruiting process and, happen, and happens quite a bit in my life. So that's just a little reminder of him whenever I see, um, you know, 22 or 222 or a bunch of twos back to back. And I, I find it interesting that of all, th- and, and again, yeah, I trust my vibes. My grandfather comes to me through numbers and you talked about your grandfather too. I, I see 213 all the time and 21 at my number, 13 his they bonded together back in like 2008. I started seeing them everywhere, and I see it all the time. So you see 222, I see 213, and I just think that's really cool that that's happening. Uh, before we get into anything else about football, what's your favorite memory of your grandfather? And also to share his first name because I want to give him a shout out. Yeah, so his name is John Hedman, and um, probably my favorite memories are just. Um, sitting on his back porch and, and talking, you know, I just wanted to um, pick his brain and, and chop it up with him. So I'd go up and just knock on his door and we'd sit outside and talk, talk on his back porch. Um, you know, those are some of my favorite memories, just being able to, to be with him and, you know, talk and learn, learn from him and all the wisdom that he has. Yeah, you know, and did he get, is there a memory or two of something he, he taught you, something he said to you that you think sticks out the most, like a piece of advice that has lasted with you this whole time? Hmm. I wouldn't say anything in particular. Um, one thing that was pretty special is that um, when I was in high school, before he passed away, the last game that he saw me play was when we played only in, and I had one of the best games of my career. So that was, that was pretty special. Here with Cole Snyder today on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, having some fun, speaking about the more important things in life. Cole, I, I in owning my own company and coming up with logos and working on all that stuff, i got to give you a shout-out. I love the Cole Snyder logo. Thank so, you. You're welcome. So who did it? How, when did this happen? How did... How did this all come together? Because as a president and CEO of a multimedia marketing company, I'm looking at this going, Cole, after football, you and I might have to talk. So where did this come from? <laughs> yeah, so to kind of start at the top and talk about a little bit of business and whatnot, um, you know, entrepreneurship kind of runs in my blood, and um, I'm getting my, fast, my, my master's in finance right now. And I got my undergrad degree in economics, so I would like to do something in the business world, whether it's entrepreneurship or finance or, or anything in between. But my great-grandfather, my mother, and my uncle are all entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, it's pretty special that my, my mother and some other people in our family were able to start their own business and they own manufacturing businesses. So my mom is really savvy when it comes to, um, you know, entrepreneurship and marketing and those things. And my mom and my sister have done a great job with helping me build the brand um, that I have today. And um, Eric Martin is my graphic designer and works on my website and helps me with all, all things 
um, in that field, and he does a really good job. You know, if you go to my website, I am the Cole Snyder dot com, you can you can see his work and everything that he's done for me. Um, but he does a really good job, and um, also have a great team behind me between my mom, my dad, and my sister, and other people that help as well. Yeah, I mean this looks, and I'm on the site right now while we're talking. It looks awesome. I, I have to ask you this: Got sauce? What does this mean? Yeah, so. My nickname in high school was always Sauce because when I got in the field, I was just a different person, and I just had the sauce, um, or similar to like the juice. Um, so that was my name, my nickname when I went to high school, and it kind of just stuck with me ever since. And then, um, you know, thinking about branding and thinking about, you know, how can I create a brand for myself? Um, Secret Sauce, with, Secret with a C, C S being my initials. Um, I just, I just thought it was right, and I thought it fit, so I stuck with it. Hi, this is Amy from Mother's Cupboard, home of the whole frittata. We are open daily, 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For takeout orders, call 315-432-0942. And tune in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora for our monthly food challenge and try our Wake Up Call signature menu item, available seven days a week. Here at Mother's Cupboard, we are Central New York, and it's our honor to serve you. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating at 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in-store and always online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, order anywhere, anytime at maandpazpopcorn.com. Stop in to get a tin at Ma and Pa's on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York to get your half-price refills for the rest of your life. Come to Ma and Pa's for your holiday gift giving for family, friends, employees, and clients. And remember for fundraising and events to call 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacting the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily, you know, we bring in local produce, we prepare to order in the kitchen, we hand bread our chicken, we hand spin our milkshakes, it's it's great food, it doesn't taste like fast food. I, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant, it's different. We, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service, and so... I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have at any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora is the exclusive multimedia marketing partner of your Lemoyne College Dolphins. Tune in on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time for Dolphin Time, first and third Wednesday of each month with AD and DT featuring Athletics Director Bob Beretta and myself, Dan Tortora. Every second and fourth Wednesday, you'll find the Dolphin Dive, diving into the stories of student athletes, coaches, administration, future Dolphins, and alumni. All of our content with the Dolphins can be found by subscribing to our YouTube channel on youtube.com backslash wake up call dt or you can just go to youtube and search at wake up call dt and make sure when you're there that you go to the lemoyne dolphins playlist 
that's exclusively on our YouTube channel. You can also find the Dolphins by going to wakeupcalldt.com. Underneath exclusive partners, you'll find the Lemoyne Dolphins page. And for more information, go to lemoynedolphins.com. As always, fins up. I like that secret sauce, and I'm all about you know plays on words, acronyms, and all that. So secret sauce, I, I I'm I'm feeling it with a C for Cole Snyder. So sounds like you definitely are planning your future while you're working on your present, which I love that people can hear this right now because it's an opportunity for people to realize, like, if you want something, you go get it, and you can't be short-sighted. You have to think about the long game. Have you always been that way, coming from a family of entrepreneurs? Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, when it comes to, like, my football journey and stuff, I mean, I've always been a guy that's been overlooked and under-recruited, you know, coming from upstate New York, especially in in um, Lakewood, New York, Jamestown, New York area, there's a lot of um, big time recruits coming out of that area. So, you know, I, I, I had to deal with that growing up. So I know how that is. And that's only has fueled me and made me into the person that I am today. So that doesn't that doesn't bother me a bit. And it just adds more fuel to the fire. Yeah, and we look at, like you said, uh, Jamestown, New York, uh, you know, Lakewood, Jamestown area. It's about three and a half hours from Syracuse. Growing up, did you cheer for Syracuse? Did you wear orange and blue? Did you ever come to a game? I mean, a lot of upstate New York and New York State and central New York is just, you know, th this is the team, right? This is the team that people gravitate toward. There's Syracuse fans all over the world, but in the state of New York, it's a normalcy wherever you are in the state to cheer on Syracuse. So did you have that growing up? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of fans that are Syracuse fans down where I'm from. I'm not going to sit here and say that I was a diehard Syracuse fan, but, you know, I've always watched games on TV, them being like three hours from me in the closest power five school to me. So, um, you know, always knew about the Orange, always watched them. And, you know, my high school coach is actually John Kinder, who played quarterback for the Orange. I believe he graduated in 2014, and he's been, been a tremendous role model for me and someone who I can look up to and and want to want to be like when when I get older and everything like that and he's helped me tremendously from my development and being a quarterback my development as a football player and my development as a man so um, he's guided me a, a lot a ton through this process as well as so many other people um, especially like Tom or PZ um, someone that I look at as a mentor who's helped me a ton um, and just football, recruiting, being a man. I mean, there's so many people that have helped me get to this point in my life. But, yeah, for a long answer to answer your question, that's that's my extent with the Syracuse Orange. Yeah, you know, and, and Eric Dungey, former quarterback for Syracuse, you put a post up of you leaping over a player next to Eric Dungey doing it for Syracuse, and he responded upstate ups. What does it mean to you that one of the greatest to play quarterback at Syracuse gave you some respect out there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you when you jump over another man, that's that's something special and I, I take pride in that. So I've been I've been hurdling people since high school and I know Eric Dungey is famous for doing the same. And, um, you know, actually, you know, I'm sure Eric Dungey doesn't remember this, but when I was in high school on a visit to Syracuse after the spring game, um, you know, I watched the spring game and everything. And then, you know, just he and there's no way that he remembers this, but I remember walking around um, the weight room and we were exiting um, the practice facility. And, you know, Eric, Eric was walking in just after the spring game and he took his time to, you know, just stop and talk with us. And I'm sure he had a ton of things going on. And, you know, my experience with him there and my experience with other um, professional and college players um, that act in the manner that he did is something that I wanted to replicate and something that I that I do it and just take the time to, to interact with people because, I mean, it means a lot to them. Like it meant to me when I was talking to Eric back in the day. Well, I, I mean, that definitely shows the pay it forward in you. It shows you the the humbleness that you have when you had such a great experience at Syracuse and you got to be around Eric Dungey and you said like look at how he treats people I want to make sure that I'm treating people with respect and helping out the next person like he's helping me out why did you ultimately not choose Syracuse the first time 
Um, well, Rutgers was the first one to offer me, and I didn't have a Syracuse offer at the time. Okay. And you know, being from upstate New York, not not a highly recruited area, someone taking a chance on you is something that meant a lot to me. And Rutgers being the first ones to offer me, um, you know, I was supposed to go to Syracuse camp in Michigan State and a whole bunch of other camps that summer. But that was a big factor in my decision, someone someone believing in me. And and I love that because, and you'll get to know this, Cole, uh, whatever happens in your future, but uh, helping out the kids in the state of New York, central New York, upstate New York, has been a mission for me for many, many years because there is so much talent here and there's such a negative theme that is out there that just really isn't based in any factual evidence. There are a ton of players from upstate and central New York that have won Super Bowls, not just made it to the NFL. So for you, has that always kind of put a chip on your shoulder? And what would you like to say to people about upstate New York athletes and New York athletes in general? Because you and I both know that there's a heck of a lot more than what a lot of people say when it comes to New York. Yeah, 100%. And that 100% 100% put a chip on my shoulder um, when I was in high school, and it still does to this day, being an under-recruited guy, just not having the name to back to back me, you know. And um, with what you just said and, you know, there being talent here and people just not getting the recognition that they deserve, um, that was motivation for me to start a nonprofit organization called Dare to Be Great that I recently started last spring. And with the nonprofit, I aim to help um, economically challenged kids that don't have the opportunity to, you know, travel to camps, pay for travel league expenses, um, pay for sporting equipment that they need, pay for the training, the one on one training and the camps and all those expenses that kids might not have um, because they're economically challenged or don't have the people in their life that are willing to support them. I was so fortunate to have two parents um, and a sister that supported me in whatever I needed and gave me all the opportunities that I could ever imagine. And I want to do the same for for kids in the Western New York and central and really upstate New York area um, that don't have those opportunities. So you know, um, obviously, I'm still still looking for funding and stuff for that. But those are some of the things I aim to do with my nonprofit. There to be great. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, Carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 387-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. GG Cards and Breaks Like, comment, subscribe GG Cards and Breaks located for you on 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York is open seven days a week. Head to GG Cards and Breaks On Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays from 10 to 5, they have singles, graded cards, as well as packs and boxes. You never know what's going to be at GG Cards and Breaks. So you got to stop in every single week and sometimes every other day.
to head out to GG Cards and Breaks. If you've never collected cards before, it's a perfect time to start. And if you have collected it, you know how wonderful the hobby is and how amazing the community is. Coming together at GG Cards and Breaks, a fantastic staff with fantastic people who are passing down the sports card collecting from generation to generation or starting it in their family for the first time ever is truly an amazing experience that connects us to the world of sports like no other. Head to GG Cards and Breaks for soccer, basketball, football, baseball, as well as multi-sport and so much more, including AEW. You can also find... Disney Lorcana singles, and you can find Pokemon all at GG Cards and Breaks on 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York. Open seven days a week right off of Teal Ave. Make sure you head out there today. Well, I could tell you, and I know that I jokingly, not not jokingly, said to you, you know, we got to talk in the future, but with some, with the people that care about Central and Upstate New York, about the state of New York in general, helping out people, giving opportunities. A lot of people don't know that the star system is flawed in the sense of if you don't have the means to get out to camps, you could have all the talent in the world, but you don't have the stars because not a lot of people see you or the right places and right people at the time don't see you. So, you know, I think it's I think it's huge what you're doing and that you care and dare to be great I think is wonderful, but as I as I said before, you and I might have to talk beyond football because anybody that is willing to help out the state of New York in a humble, moral, and value-driven way with God at the center of it is is more than okay to sit at my table. So you and I might have to we might have to talk about a few things, Cole. Just so you know, let's do it. So before I let you go, though, and we know the decision is going to be coming up at some point in the not too distant future. When you came to visit Syracuse this time around, what did you do? What did you see? I know you got your hands on the Heisman, so I would love to get your uh, thoughts while you were out here and everything that you took away from the visit. Yeah. So to start off, they they had they dinner on on the basketball court and everything. In the dome. I mean, I've played in the dome, been in the dome a couple times, but there's something about it that just when you walk in there, it's like you're you're supposed to be a football player. You know, it's it's just a really cool feeling, and it's just a rich tradition in there. And um, then you know, a lot of food was was consumed on the on the visit. I had to stop eating at a certain point, but um, a lot of great food. Um, and just really getting to know the people that was the biggest thing no matter what events we did or anything really just trying to figure out how these people are um if they're if they're the right people that i want to be around and everything like that but you know coming away i really feel good about syracuse right now and um loved love the energy um all the people that i'm talking to um all the interactions with people that are not involved with the program it was a really great experience, and you know I love love the atmosphere, love the energy, love love what's going on in Syracuse right now. How important is it for? I mean, you got one more season to give, and this is a wide open quarterback competition at Syracuse. So, you know, do do the stars feel like they could be aligning for you the second time around? You're an upstate New York guy. You know, so you you went to Syracuse before. You were around Eric Dungey and spending some time. But you played at Rutgers, you played at Buffalo, you've never gone too far away from home, and now three and a half hours away, here you are with one more season and a golden opportunity to take the job at quarterback for a new era of Syracuse football. Does that feel like poetry in motion, in a way? Yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, I'll just say, I'm an upstate New York guy, through and through, no one wears a park in shorts like me, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> Um, but no, in all seriousness, um, you know, I think it could be a really good opportunity for both of us. And, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to stress too much about it. And if I end up here, um, it's meant to be, if not, it's not meant to be. So I'm excited though. I do want to get one last note here because I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. Uh, John Kinder is a good friend of mine and I obviously covered him when he was at Syracuse. What can you say about John? You talked about him being your coach. Just what you take away from your experience with somebody of the character of John Kinder. Yeah, one thing, one word or two words that I would say to describe him would be role model. Like, he's just a great person um, down to the core. 
and someone that um, that I look up to and that I follow and someone that's helped me so much in my life, and I, I can never repay him enough. Well, Cole, it has been my complete honor to have you on the broadcast. I, uh, you got, you know, you and I can when we connected, you got right back to me, and to be able to speak with you and to share this with the world it really means a lot to me. And I love my job because I get to meet people like yourself that just seem like really down to earth, good, hardworking people. So wherever you choose, whatever happens, I would love to have you back on the show to continue to tell your story if you'd like to come back. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for covering me. Absolutely, Caldwell. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I know you've been on a bunch of watch lists, throwing 2,000-plus yards, 3,000-plus yards, keeping those interceptions under double digits. So the stats don't lie, but I didn't talk a lot about those stats today because I, to I wanted people to get to know the man behind the stats. And you did a great job of painting a picture for a lot of us. And I'm happy to meet you virtually, and hopefully you and I will get to talk soon face-to-face. -face. That's right. Likewise.